In this presentation, we will continue on with part four of our partnership comprehensive problem, this time entering the beginning balances into our tax forms, into our tax software. Note that when we're thinking about the beginning balances, this might be something that if we're continuing on with the same type of tax software that would roll forward for us. However, if we're putting this information into the new tax forms or a new tax software, we have to deal in some way with the beginning balances from the prior year if the partnership was in existence in the prior year and had the prior year tax forms filled out. Now, the best way to do this would typically be to get the tax return from the prior year and enter it into your tax software in the prior year if you're using tax software and then perform it forward. That way you can verify the prior year tax return to the prior year uh, software that you put into the, to the system Proforma it forward so that you can well first you can verify that everything is in there exactly how it looks on the tax return and then when you proforma it forward you can be kind of dependent on the software more to make sure that the rollovers and everything will work out and then you're pretty confident that at the beginning balances that you have in your current tax year match out to the prior year now if you can't do that for some reason then you're going to have to enter the, the prior year balances into the current system. Obviously, if it's a new tax return, a, a new partnership in the current year, then you're not going to have this issue either with the beginning balances because you, you're not going to have any because you didn't have a tax return in the prior year. So here we are in our form 1065. We're in the tax software, that being a Lacert tax software. Lacert's owned by Intuit, the owner of QuickBooks. Other tax software will be similar in terms of the data input and the generation of the forms with it. We're looking at the 1065 and we're going to start with thinking about the beginning balances for the balance sheet. You'll recall that the first page of the 1065 is basically going to be the income statement. That's going to be for the current year. What we need to do is enter the beginning data for the balance sheet that's found on page 5. It's going to be in what's called the Schedule L, the Schedule L being the balance sheet. Now when we think about the balance sheet, notice we are talking about the balance sheet per books here for the book balance sheet, not the tax balance sheet. We're going to be entering the beginning balance sheet. Now, the beginning balance sheet would often be, you'd be getting this information if it was the second year of uh, the, the partnership or if there was a partnership that was continuing from the prior year. Hopefully, it would roll forward with the tax software or uh, you would have the tax information, the tax return that was prepared last year, even if it's not in the same software, and have the beginning year information that you would be inputting here. We're going to be picking this information up from our data Within our data, here's going to be the prior year data. So we're picking up the prior year data. And again, in practice, you'd probably be taking it from the tax return, the prior year tax return. So let's get into our data input. Just, be, just note that as we do this, it should be fairly straightforward to enter the assets in there and to, then to do the liabilities. What's going to be a bit of a problem or the thing that we need to be most careful about will be the capital account, the beginning capital account. We want to make sure that what's in the books on the beginning capital account ties out to what's in the tax return for the prior year which will be the beginning balance for this year because it'll have to roll forward and tie forward as we enter the information into the into the current year so we'll show how that works as we go also note that there may be instances where the schedule l isn't required to be attached to uh, the tax return if you were to submit the tax return and therefore will not be populated by some tax software as you go through it but we want to see the schedule l as we enter the data into the tax software because it gives us that double check, that double entry accounting type system. And therefore, I'll, we'll typically override the software to make sure that Schedule L will be showing. And then I'll remove the override at the end. There's some debate as to whether it would be good to add more data to the IRS if they don't need it. I mean, for example, if the Schedule L is not required, what does it hurt to give them the Schedule L? Some would argue it does. Why would you give them any more information than they need to? They might find something in the added information that they want to audit that they wouldn't have otherwise done so if you hadn't had given it to them ha and others would argue well that if the schedule l all ties out and everything's straightforward and you're giving them more information possibly that would answer any questions that they might have with regard to a possible audit without it and they wouldn't need to audit in that situation so you can go either way on the argument there but bottom line if it's not required we'll typically not include it however to do the data input i'm going to go back to the data I'm going to go to the balance sheet and we're going to go then to the miscellaneous information. So I want to go to the balance sheet miscellaneous and then we're going to force or override. So anytime you see this little override in Lacert, that's going to say we're forcing the system to do something that we should probably not have to do typically 
uh, but we're going to force it here. We're then going to use the schedule L and then we'll remove it when we're done. And then if we don't need it, then Lacert will not uh, include it in the actual filing. Then we're going to go back to the balance sheet. We're going to go back to the balance sheet if I can do so. Steady hand there. All right. Now we're in the balance sheet. We're going to be entering the beginning balance numbers. Here's going to be our data. We got the 72,000 uh, first. So 72 for cash. So I'm going to go back to Lacert. We're going to say this is going to be the 72,000. Then I'm going to go back over and say that the accounts receivable was the uh, 76,000. So 76,000 here. And then I'm going to go back over and say that we had 60,000 in inventory. Now inventory says it's different from cost of goods sold. So we're kind of forcing it here. We'll talk about the cost of goods sold schedule uh, later. So this is going to be 60,000. I'm just going to tie out the beginning balances for now. Next we have the prepaid assets. So I'm going to put that into other current assets. I'm going to call this prepaid assets. And that's going to be for the amount of, what was it again? It was 50,000, 50,000. And there we have that. And then I'm going to go back to here. And we're going to say that we have the investment in tax exempt bonds. So that I'm going to put that here, tax exempt bonds for the amount of 20,000, 20,000. Then I'm going to go back in and we're going to take the uh, investment in common stocks. I'm going to put that into other current assets. I'm just going to call it investment. And that was for the amount of 20,200. So 20,200. And then I'm going to say, okay, we can actually verify the assets first. So I could go back up to the forms and say, does everything tie out so far? Well, we haven't entered the property, plant, and equipment yet, but the current assets are two. Uh, 98810. So we're at the 298200. Uh, yeah, I think the cash needs to be uh, 72610. Going back and forth like this is a little bit of a jump, but it'll help to, to kind of, you know, this is how we would reconcile that out. So if there's a data input problem, we go back over and say, all right, we could check each section 72610, 610. Let's go back over to the forms then. And we're going to say now we're at the 298,810. And that's the 298,810. Now let's move down to the property, plant, and equipment. So property, plant, and equipment. Now we're going to be entering the, the actual information into a more detailed depreciation schedule. For now, we're going to put in the balances directly into the balance sheet. That being the 315. So I'm going to say this is 315. And then the depreciation, accumulated depreciation, is going to be the 117143. All right. And then I can go back to the forms and say, now we have all of our assets. That's going to be the 496667. So that's the 496667. That looks good. Now we're going to go to the liabilities where we have the accounts payable, 49,000. Let's go back to the accounts payable, back to the data input, scrolling down the accounts payable, 49,000. And next we have the notes payable 50,000. So then we're at the notes payable here at the 50,000. And then we have the capital. So we're going to go down to the uh, capital. Now this is the tricky part because we have two partners here. So I'm going to force the capital first to see if we're in balance and then go back in and enter the detail for those two partners. So we're at the 397667, 397667. 397667. Note the override here. So we're overriding the system to first see if we are in balance. So let's check it out. We're going to go back up to the forms. And we have, once again, the total assets, the total assets lining up at the 496667 and the total liabilities and equity at the 496667. So that looks good. We've tied this out. Now, this number then. We're going to want to put in in more detail. We want to break out the beginning balances for the individual partners capital accounts. Now that calculation is done on the M2. So the M2 you'll notice is an analysis of the partners capital account. And it starts with the beginning uh, balance for the year. So I'm going to go to this beginning balance. That's what we need to data input. I'm going to right click on here. I'm going to jump to the data input. Now we have the beginning balance. This is going to be total for all the partners. And then we're going to have to break them out to the partners. In our case, the only two of them. And that's going to be for the 397667. So we have the 397667. 
total, then we have to allocate uh, between the two partners. For Lucert, I'm going to use screen 29, which is the special allocation. So I'm going to go to the allocations then, screen 29. And over here, we can see that we have the beginning balances. Gives you a little worksheet down below where it says that uh, the total is at the 397667. And I'm going to allocate between the two. I'm going to allocate in accordance with our Excel worksheet where Tim had the 119300. So Tim is at the 119300. 300 and then we had James at 278367 so we have the 278367 278367 that brings the allocated amount down to zero so you, this will give you a little check figure down below that they have been properly allocated and then we can go back to our balance sheet what I want to do is go back to the balance sheet and I'm going to remove this override. I'm going to remove this override now and see if it then calculates by itself given that data that we have just input. So I'm going to delete this out. We're going to go back up to the forms. And then I'm going to go to page 5 and scroll down to page 5. And we're still in balance. There it looks like we're still in balance. That looks good. There's the 397667 that still appears but wasn't overridden. And then if we go to the M2 we have our beginning balance here at the 397667. So that looks good. So we'll stop it here for now. Next time we're going to enter the beginning balances of some another item that you will typically have in there uh, if you're rolling over the software. And that's going to be the depreciation schedules. Or, or even if you're entering the data from a partnership into the current system, from a prior system, you're going to need the depreciation schedules and enter them into the system. So the next time, we're going to think about those beginning balances for the for the property plant and equipment the supporting documentation for uh, this item and this item we're going to enter that into the system and then it'll help us to calculate what's going to happen in the at the year end for accumulated depreciation and the property and it will help us to calculate the depreciation on a book basis and on a tax basis